What's going on and welcome to a brand new episode of Hair Mistakes That Age You Faster, subscriber edition. Now today is a very fun episode for me. I'm excited to bring it to you because I really get to dive into some stuff that I haven't been able to teach you before. Each individual in this series is a different kind of opportunity for me to kind of touch on things that I might not have thought to touch on. So I personally am loving this series and today I'm going to let you know there's a lot of info. So yeah. One, you're going to want to stick around, and two, there's a lot of info, and I like to talk, so good luck with that. <laughs> okay, if you are a veteran of this series, then you know what's going to happen next. I'm going to throw a photo up on the screen, and we're going to introduce you to an awesome lady named Betty. And while I'm introducing you, that photo is going to be sitting there so that you can go below and comment on what you think I would modify or what mistakes I am seeing with what's going on with her hair right now. And while you do that, I'm going to explain to the new folks exactly what we do in this series because, as I said that, it sounds kind of terrible. <laughs> so bear with me. Meet Betty. Now, if you're new to this series, my name is Justin Hickox. I have been doing hair since 1995. And in this particular series, subscribers from this channel actually send in photos asking for my advice on different things that might be happening with their hair, different mistakes that might be going on, and how we can make slight modifications to help them get a little bit more of a youthful look. So thank you, Betty, for being a part of this. I'm really excited to kind of dive into all of this today. Now, I haven't done this in a while, but every once in a while, I get an influx of a lot of new eyes on the channel, and I feel the need to kind of explain where I'm coming from here. Now, for those of you that know me, you know where this is going, but if you're new here, when I'm saying youthful, I don't mean look a certain age. I mean different little things that we can modify or shift within our hair that will help us look the best at whatever age we are. This has nothing to do with loving the age that you're at or accepting the age that you're at. Understand where I'm coming from, and now that that disclaimer is out there, should we dive into the mistakes? Okay, the funny thing is, if you look at this photo, you might think, well, there really doesn't seem to be much wrong with this. This actually looks pretty good, and you're right, and this is one of the things that I'm excited to kind of share with you today. This front photo really doesn't have a lot broken with it. There are some minor shifts that we'll talk about that I think could play a huge role, but we'll get into more of what's really kind of going on with all of this in just a minute. Now, when we're talking about the length, in my opinion, it's just a little bit too long. You don't really see this until you look at the profile. Now here's where we really start to notice what's going on and where a lot of my suggestions are going to stem from. Once we look at the profile, it's easy to tell that the length starts to drag Betty's face down as well as it just drags the overall shape down a bit. Now if we bring that length up just a little bit, not only will it help to start lifting the eye up, it'll also allow us more freedom with the way we cut the layers into the hair to start creating volume in the areas that we want to create it to start accentuating things about Betty's face shape that we want to accentuate, which kind of leads us directly into mistake number two. Now mistake number two is all about the layering, and fair warning, I have quite a bit to unpack here, so stick with me, I promise it's worth it. <laughs> the layers are a little bit too short in comparison to the length. Now, if you look at the front photo, the shape really doesn't look that bad like we talked about before, and it works reasonably well for her, but when we switch to the profile, it's almost as though it's a different haircut. Many times, if the layers on the top are too short for the length in the back, it can end up giving this kind of disconnect to look to where the profile seems to be a totally different haircut than what you're seeing when you look in the mirror. Now, my other concern with the layers on top is that when they're cut too short, it can make the crown look very flat as well as the back look very full, which brings the eye towards the back and down the shape. Simply bringing that length up in the back a little bit and taking some of the volume out of the bottom while leaving the top layers the same length they are currently would do a lot in creating more volume where we want to see volume and bringing the entire shape together into one kind of cohesive look. Now, there's also a bit of extra bulk on this side right here, and that's closing Betty's face off just a little bit. I think taking that a little bit shorter would lighten the area up and create a bit more volume in this, as well as open her face up a bit more. Now, one other thing that Betty mentioned in her email was that the crown is starting to split. Now, this isn't an uncommon concern at all. A lot of people struggle with this area in the back. It's really hard to see from this photo exactly how short these layers on top are, but many times cutting those layers too short can exacerbate this concern. You will actually find your hair splitting easier and being harder to control. Usually, once we get the layers balanced for the length and work in a strong shape, it has a tendency to help that area get a little bit more volume and control and be easier to deal with. 
Now, the other part of the hair splitting in the back actually will take us into mistake number three, but before we jump there, I do wanna say that if you are struggling with taming that cowlick in the back, I did create an entire video all about that, which I will link right here for you right now, as well as I will be linking it at the very end of this video if you wanna stick around, so don't stress on clicking that right now unless you're about to leave the video anyway, at which point, yeah, go check that one out. <laughs> okay, now mistake number three is admittedly a bit of an assumption here, so I don't want to say that this is what's happening, However, it is something that I see happen in this situation all the time, so I do want to use this as an opportunity to teach. For a lot of us, our hair changes as we age, and in many cases, it's very easy, especially again when you're in Betty's situation, where she did say that she has been wearing the same style for a number of years. In those situations, it's very easy to approach the styling process and the products used in the same way that you have for years, even though your hair texture has changed and it may allow you or even become a necessity to use different techniques and or different products to get a similar result. In Betty's case, as her hair's gotten a little bit thinner than it used to be and she's struggling with getting any volume, she's likely noticing that her hair isn't as dense as it used to be and therefore the products and systems that she's been using are not kind of filling in that gap. Now another opinion to this all that's kind of a side opinion is that if we switch this part over just a little bit, even to either side, it would help to create a little bit more volume on the top and potentially help her to feel like her hair isn't so flat and creating such a rectangular shape. And more importantly, that extra bit of volume can help to control that cowlick in the back just a little bit easier, so that would be kind of a win-win for her. Okay, so those are the potential mistakes that are happening with her hair right now, so with that said, let's dive into the suggestions a little bit deeper and kind of see what this would all look like. She pulled it together, and then I'm gonna wrap all of this up in our curveball section today. And when I say wrap it up, I mean I'm gonna bring it all together. First, let's switch backgrounds a little bit, should we? Yes. Yes, we should. Yes, definitely. Okay, now the first mistake that we talked about was the length being just a little bit too long and how it's you know, drawing the shape down and the eye towards the back. Now, if we bring that length up just a little bit, this is what that would look like. Now, if you notice here from the front, not a huge change. And realistically, like I said before, there wasn't supposed to be because it's not really a broken length on her from the front. Now, however, when we move to the profile, it does create a little bit more of a dramatic change. We bring that length up a little bit. You notice that it does start to lift the shape up, but if we're being completely honest, it doesn't address the bulk in the back or the eye really being brought down. And in fact, in some ways, it actually compounds that concern because we're not dealing with the actual shape. We're only addressing one potential concern. So, that kind of takes us into mistake number two. So mistake number two, we talked about the layering and there's kind of a handful of different little potential concerns that are happening here. Now we mentioned that the layers on top were a little bit too short. This can affect the cowlick concern that Betty is going through as well as it's giving a very square and boxy look to the overall shape. There's also a little bit too much bulk in the back which is enhancing a little bit of that eye being brought down and that bulk in the overall shape. Now, one other thing we talked about was there's a little bit too much heaviness on this one side right here that if we would lighten that up, we'd get a little bit more openness and volume in this area as well. So now that we've already brought in this length up, let's actually address the shape of it all. And if we did that, this is what that would look like. We could actually go a little bit shorter and it would even compound this look, but Spoiler alert, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that when we jump into the curveballs. I said I was gonna wrap all this together, and I'm going to, so just stick with me here. <laughs> now, however, just bringing this length up a little bit and pulling some of that bulk out of the bottom to allow the top layers to feel a bit more balanced, as well as coupling that with the layers on the side being lightened up a little bit more around her face, these are all very much on the path to creating a softer shape and creating the illusion of volume where we want, which is helping to lift her eye and accentuate more of Betty's facial features like her jaw structure and her cheekbones. So while these suggestions are all helping lead us in the right way, I still don't know that they're really 
kind of driving the style home yet, which takes us on to our next suggestion. Now, the third mistake we talked about was uh, admittedly a bit more of an opinion. We were just talking about what it would look like if we moved that part over a little bit, but also the concern that potentially the same styling process as well as products as being used now as Betty's hair is changing, and it's not yielding the results that she once received from those techniques and products and therefore creating the concern of it laying flatter and just not really feeling like it has the shape that she wants. So if we did modify the approach to how we're styling it as well as shifted that part over a little bit, this is what that would look like. Again, this is not a massive change, but it's definitely on the right path. It does help to create a little bit more volume and the areas that we want to create more volume, as well as create a little bit more overall lift like Betty is wanting to see. Now, but stick with me here because this is where things get interesting. In the curveball, we've really kind of, like I said before, brought all this together, packaged it up and wrapped it up in a nice little bow for you. So why don't we talk about that? But before we talk about that, I want to do something. So just out of curiosity, I want to see who's been here for a little while. Comment below and let me know. Finish this sentence. That view Definitely. What am I gonna say there? You know it. If you've been around, you know it. So comment below, let me know. I wanna see who's here. All right, now let's dive into the curveballs. I can't wait to show you guys this. It is, yes. I'm excited to show you this one. This is, I have the curveballs. Okay, before I get into the specific cut curveball, yes, there is one that brings all of this kind of together, I did wanna address one other option for Betty because she did mention in her email that she tried to grow her color out and it just didn't work for her. And that's completely fine. So she's back to coloring her hair. So since that is on the table, I did want to kind of address some little things that I'm seeing with it in a way that I think that she could slightly modify her current color to get a little bit more of a flattering look. Now, while Betty's color really is not broken, I do think that if we cooled that tone down just a little bit and added a little bit of depth to the roots, it would really go a long ways to adding more dimension to the overall cut as well as being a little bit more complementary to Betty's skin tone. And here's what that option would look like. Now what I like about this is it doesn't really add any maintenance to Betty's current schedule. The only difference is she's just doing a different color as opposed to the current color that she's doing now. And at the same time, because she is doing those roots a tiny bit darker and an overall color that's a little bit cooler, it's giving her hair a little bit more dimension. So to me, I love this feel for her and it's something that would be very easy for her to modify. Okay, and now for the curveball that I'm really excited to show you, and I wanted to show Betty something that she could completely do. It would address basically all of her concerns, as well as it would look fantastic on her and not be totally out of her comfort zone, at least I don't think. So, everything that we talked about with these concerns really was wrapped around layering and volume, and one of the biggest concerns that Betty was having in her email was that she feels like she just can't get the volume that she used to get. So often we want to focus on using styling products and techniques to create volume, but we overlook the fact that a lot of volume can be cut into hair. When we take volume out of certain areas, it can create the illusion that there's more volume in other areas, and therefore create a shape that we're trying to achieve even though our hair isn't technically bigger, if that makes sense. With that said, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a look that I personally think would look amazing on you, Betty. Now, I personally love this option because, again, it won't require you to change the way you approach or style your hair, but it does a great job of creating the illusion of volume on top because the sides in the back are so much shorter. I also love that the length wrapping around the ear like this does a great job of accentuating a stronger jawline as well as the layering in the very nape helps to actually accentuate the illusion again of more volume in the crown. I also love the sleekness of this coming back off your face and really opening your face up a little bit more. So to me, this would be a fantastic option. So that's why I always say, uh, who cares what I think? The question is, what do you guys think? I'm more interested in knowing what you think than what I think. I know what I think, and I'm bored with what I think. <laughs> so do me the favor. Let me know below. What do you think she should do? Do you think she should go short? Or do you think she should do something completely different? Do you think she should change her color or stay the same? You know what to do. Comment below and let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. You have a fantastic day. I'm going to sit here and enjoy this terrible view. And I can't wait to see how many of you actually knew exactly what I was going to say at the end of that last sentence. So, uh, yeah. I almost said it again. <laughs>
<laughs> Have a fantastic week. We will see you next week. Take care. <laughs> Bye. <now. laughs>